Hey everyone, it's Monica from Pop Corner Reviews, and today I'm here to talk to you about Wizards, the third installment in the Tales of Arcadia series brought to you by DreamWorks Animation, streaming on Netflix, and of course, created by Guillermo del Toro. The third installment of the trilogy, Wizards, is now streaming on Netflix, so go over and check that out. I had the opportunity to watch it this week, and I will tell you what, I loved it. I even teared up at the end, and I didn't expect to. This was my introduction to the Tales of Arcadia series, so I know I'm starting out at the background. It's not how I would normally recommend doing things, but I will say that I have already gone back and watched some episodes from the first part of the series, Troll Hunters. I had the opportunity this week to sit down virtually on a roundtable interview series with some fellow bloggers, and we got to interview Duxie, who is played by Colin O'Donoghue, you may know him from Once Upon a Time, and also the executive producer Mark Guggenheim, who worked on the entire Arcadia trilogy. During the interview, we asked questions to learn about character development and Easter eggs. You're going to love this one. A little bit about working with Guillermo del Toro, a little bit about character development, and just, you know, what it means for Colin coming from Once Upon a Time into this new amazing world of Tales of Arcadia. So I think you guys are really going to enjoy it. Check out this interview now, and I hope you watch the show now streaming on Netflix. Hey, Colin. How are you? Uh, thanks so much for talking to us. I'm wearing my Dupsy inspired necklace today <laughs> and I really enjoyed the show. I'm, I'm curious there at the end and hopefully this isn't too big of a spoiler but you know there's a scene between Dupsy and Merlin where you know he tells you you know what a wizard you've become and it's so interesting throughout the series and throughout centuries you see their relationship evolve and I was just curious if you had any kind of perspective on what Merlin's relationship to him, you know, meant to Duxie and why it was so important for him to kind of get his acceptance and approval. Yeah, I mean, it was, you know, when I was recording that, you know, stuff, it was actually quite emotional because, you know, like that, Merlin uh, was a father figure to Duxie, you know, and Duxie was constantly just trying to prove himself to Merlin, to show that he was a good wizard, to show, and he kept getting fobbed off. Um, and then, so for, for Merlin to turn around and, and say that to him and accept him as a powerful wizard and an equal was such a massive, such a massive thing for Duxie and quite an emotional uh, scene and an emotional thing to play. For sure. Yeah, that I thought was one of the most emotional scenes. I actually got tears in my eyes, so I really, really enjoyed Yay. that part. <laughs> I did. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Hey Mark, I have a question for you. Um, working with Guillermo del Toro, I know he likes to slip in some Easter eggs here and there into his works. And as I was watching the first episode, I think I found a couple. And I was curious if you could confirm or deny uh, when Duxi is going into the GDT Arcane Bookstore, possibly the name of the bookstore, and maybe Guillermo del Toro's portrait above the fireplace. And if I can keep going, <laughs> maybe a couple nods to um, Lovecraftian uh, mentions and the Haunted Mansion. So anything else that fans can look for like that? Because that was so fun. That, well, thanks for noticing all that, first of it's all. Great. Um, you know, and, and actually it's funny, like the GDT bookstore is itself mm -hmm. an Easter egg. Because if you go back uh, to Three Below, the show that predates Wizards, uh, you'll actually see the GDT bookstore in the background mm -hmm. in Arcadia. Um, so we were, we were sort of very intentionally planting that seed, uh, mm -hmm. knowing that we'd then go to see the inside of the store. Um, I'm trying to think if we'd worked out any other Easter eggs. Um, nothing springs to mind. You pretty much caught all the, you know, all the <laughs> things in the bookstore. Um, we will return to the bookstore later in the series. Um, so you'll, you'll get a second chance to to take a look um, yeah yeah that was a lot of fun i love spotting those little things so thanks for pointing those out no thank you so much hey colin i have a question for you so working with fantasy series with obviously wizards and once upon a time i'm curious they both have such dedicated fan bases and coming into wizards did you know you know anything about the fan base and did you have like a warm reception joining the show and is fantasy a genre that you you know like to be participating in 
I mean, fantasy is a genre that I've been participating in for nearly 10 years now. So whether I, whether I want to be or not, it's a, uh, it's, uh, no, I love, I love fantasy. Uh, um, I, I knew, I knew the original uh, first season of Trollhunters. So I knew about that, but I didn't know that the fan base was as mm-hmm. rabid as it is. And, you know, like similar to that, the once upon a time fans are, you know, incredibly rabid. So uh, I was, I was kind of half okay with it because uh, I'd got it was so so crazy on Once Upon a Time with the fans in a good way because that's what you want you want people to to really be passionate about your show or whatever um, so yeah it was kind of it was kind of interesting it'll be interesting to see also because Dukesy was only such a smaller role mm-hmm. in the other ones and it was amazing to see like on my Twitter and stuff like that people sort of going why are you only doing like why are you only doing like a couple of scenes that's crazy. <laughs> something going on there's something and obviously you can't say anything you know what I mean we couldn't say anything but it was sort of uh, and also it was great that the character had a, had an impact for such a small amount of screen time you know in the first in in like the in troll hunters and stuff like that so yeah it was good fun yeah absolutely they're in for a treat this season then and get to see more about your character yeah thank you thank you so I pretty much binge watch this season in a day and a half or so. And as I was watching episode after episode, um, it got to be like halfway through the season and each episode was like finale worthy. There were tons of battles and character meetups and everything going on. And I would keep checking the episode list because I was like, is this the finale? Is this the finale? Did you guys know that this season was going to be this big or did you know as you were writing did you just keep adding in scenes that just got bigger and bigger you know i I think we really knew from the outset mainly because we we knew we only had 10 episodes and we we had a sense of how much story we had to tell and it was more than 10 episodes worth um so one of the biggest challenges was figuring out how to tell all the story that we wanted to tell in the screen time we had. And, and the way I sort of describe it is, is it's kind of like when you take a car and you put in one of those compactors, you end up with something that's a lot smaller than a car, but it still weighs as much as the original car. Uh, it didn't get any lighter. That, that's sort of how I feel about the narrative here. It's like we kind of took 20 episodes worth of story and compacted it into 10. So it feels like it's got the weight of 20 episodes. For sure. Yeah, it was a really fun, you know, ending to the trilogy. Um, but man, you guys just packed so much in. It was so much fun. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 